It may look peaceful, but there's a war going on out here. A strange kind of war with unusual weapons. Oh, it's a hot war, all right. They don't come much hotter. The enemy? Fire. The early warning system? Lookout men in high towers all across Canada. I'm part of that early warning system. My name's Ben. They say a lookout man is still the best radar to spot a forest fire. My first time up today. Wonder if any enemy sleepers are lying low out there. When an electric storm hits, you're under attack. And you wish you had eyes in the back of your head. New man coming on this afternoon. He'll take over at Cullen Ridge as soon as they finish the new tower. He'll be a big help once he learns the ropes. Quite a responsibility spotting fires on 500 square miles of forest land. Among other things, these trees help prevent an awful lot of floods. They protect the wildlife too. But most of all, trees mean wood. They supply the raw material for some of our largest industries. Yep, pretty valuable stuff, trees. Now, wouldn't you know it, of all the places for a fire to start, had to be in a hidden area. Wonder how long that rascal's been crawling underground, right under my nose. Judging by the color of that smoke, it must be in the spruce belt, the bottom of Miller Ridge. Long as the wind keeps quiet, it shouldn't spread too fast. Now, let's see. 110 degrees at 9.15 a.m. Six miles, Miller Ridge, and all the other facts the boys at the station should know. Guess that pretty well covers everything for now, as far as I'm concerned. I'll say one thing about those smoke chasers at the station. Once you get in that report, and if it's accurate, it sure doesn't take them very long to set the wheels in motion to track it down. The problem is to get in control of the situation before it gets out of hand. Fighting a forest fire involves quite a lot of teamwork. We've got an early warning system, that's me, an air force, that's Harry. Shock troops, even reinforcements if they're needed. I guess you could say it's something like a small scale army. must be the young feller for the new tower. Yep, that's him, all right. Have to start giving him the dope first thing tomorrow morning. But where do you begin? How do you break a new man in? What do you tell him first? Besides a good pair of legs to get him up and down the tower ladder, one thing you hope for is that he's curious, that he wants to explore, that he wants to get to know every inch of the territory around the tower. But most of all, you hope he's got a feeling for the bush, that he really likes to be out here in the woods, that he likes the wildlife too. The next three or four days, he'll be getting a lot of information thrown at him. But if he's got common sense and a good pair of eyes, 
I guess the rest is pretty easy. Anyway, we'll see how he makes out in the morning. The best place to spot a fire is from a hilltop. Better still, if you're in a tall tower that looks out over the surrounding land. Of course, if you're in the mountains, you probably don't need to be in a tower at all. Except when it's very windy, most of the windows in the tower cabin are usually kept open, but the lookout man's got to keep them clean so that when they are closed, he can have a clear view. Besides keen eyesight, a good pair of medium power binoculars comes in handy. Sometimes filters and haze cutters may also help the lookout man to get a better look at distant terrain. Not every smoke you see is a forest fire. False smokes can come from a lumber mill or railroad station or it may be the dust from a busy dirt road. It takes a while and a lot of looking before you can get to tell the difference. He doesn't know it, but this morning, before we came up here, I arranged with the boys at the station to make a check on Jim and send up a smoke from a smoke generator. See if he's on his toes, if he can put through an accurate report. Most of the time, though, we use smoke generators to find the extent of screened or hidden areas. Not bad at all. Up here, lookout means stay on your toes, even if it is just a test. If you don't stay on your toes, you can bet your sweet life a real fire will pop up and catch you napping. The moment a smoke is spotted, the problem is to find out exactly where it is. With its offset device, the Allidade and map on the finder table is probably the best piece of locating equipment a lookout man can have. The smoke is sighted through the Allidade, just as you'd sight a rifle. The section of the finder map that's directly beneath the slot of the Allidade pointer is the line of sight and the pivot of the Allidade shows where the tower is in relation to the fire. You should be able to locate the fire on the finder map, which is a bird's eye view of the entire country around the tower. On the edge of the finder map is a graduated ring marked off 360 degrees, like a compass zero being north. Any sighting of the Allidade will tell you how many degrees the fire is from due north. On the finder map are known landmarks. If any of these are near the fire, they can help in judging distance and location. Haze sometimes helps in judging distance by making the ridges stand out from one another. Landmark distances are recorded at the blank portion of the map on a line indicating the landmarks, azimuth or angle, from true north. The fire seems to be at a distance halfway between the lake and the ridge. Tower maps vary in scale. Our map is two miles to the inch. The finder map is not a table. Keeping it clean is essential. Otherwise, mistakes and delays can occur. Once he locates the fire with the Allidade and finder map, the lookout carefully and accurately makes out his report on the lookout report form. It takes him just a few minutes to complete the form and report in. He must take enough time, though, to make sure He's got the facts straight. One error in reporting can send the firefighters on a wild goose chase, giving the fire a chance to get a head start. 
So it's worth taking that extra time now to save time later. The lookout tries to analyze the kind of fuel burning. On his finder map, fuel types are often shown. With experience in the field, he'll get to know the location of other fuels in the area. The report should be called in the moment the lookout has satisfied himself that it's as accurate as possible. It should contain a tower name, time sighted, azimuth, estimated distance, probable location, probable fuel type, and other information like the color of the smoke, and the probable wind drift if he can't see the base of the smoke. This time, the smoke was a test of speed and accuracy, but it could have been the real McCoy. In the dispatcher's office, there's a map that covers the same territory as the lookout's finder map. The azimuth of the fire is plotted. Of course, having a second tower will make matters much easier. At headquarters, the azimuth from tower number two is then received. The place where the two lines cross will pinpoint the exact position of the fire. The bearings must be right on the button. Otherwise, valuable time will be lost in locating the fire. At the end of each day, the lookout's daily report is completed. However, he has a time schedule for regular radio reports to headquarters. Even though he hasn't spotted any smokes, it's important to keep the dispatcher fully informed. But idle talk must be avoided on the radio. Idle talk can prevent someone from getting through either to you or to headquarters with an important call. During the course of the day, a thorough and systematic check should be made of each section of the terrain around the tower. Sometimes you can miss a smoke by just general scanning. When you get time, catch up as much as possible on the fire protection handbooks, especially the lookout manual. They all help you do a better job. Also, during the day, Ranger Headquarters broadcasts the fire weather report. From this report, you get the general dope on the temperature, the humidity, the wind speed, and the rainfall. Although many lookouts maintain a small local weather station near the tower, it's important to get the official general weather picture and the special fire weather forecast. If he makes the weather readings for his own area, the lookout will have to leave the tower for short periods of time. But he must always check with headquarters first. He's a very important factor in the fire control operation. Failure to report his whereabouts can cause concern and confusion if a fire springs up during his absence. On leaving the tower, he makes sure the trap door is locked. Incidentally, never let familiarity prevent you from being careful when using the tower ladder, even if it does have safety guards for protection. Clearing the trails is a job we usually leave for wet weather when there's more free time from tower duty. When you explore these trails, your finder map comes to life, and you get a first-hand knowledge of the landmarks and kind of fuel types in the area. With forest fires, the weather is the most important factor. There are a number of weather gadgets to keep us up on fire danger. This instrument enclosure is one of several to be found throughout the district. Most enclosures are set up in a clearing on level ground. Among other things, these instruments will tell you if it's getting drier or hotter or windier. This anemometer measures the speed of the wind. Before the wind speed can be figured out, the counter must be turned on and the starting time and initial reading recorded. 
While the counter is registering the number of revolutions made by the cups, other information can be gathered. The instrument shelter contains other instruments for keeping track of the weather. The maximum and minimum thermometers give an accurate reading of the temperature. The hygrometer with its two thermometers will tell you how much humidity there is in the air. Using distilled water, the muslin wick cloth over the right hand bulb is kept wet all the time. If there's no distilled water, rainwater will do. To find the relative humidity, the wet bulb is fanned until the temperature of the wet bulb thermometer stops falling. Then take the temperature of the wet bulb and the dry bulb. The reading for each thermometer is carefully recorded on the weather record chart. In the fire danger booklet are the relative humidity tables. The relationship of the two temperatures will give a number which tells you the relative humidity present in the atmosphere. In this case, it's 26%, pretty dry. This information is then added to the weather record chart. Another type of hygrometer, which is sometimes used, is the sling psychrometer. It's more delicate to handle, but it's more accurate. To measure the amount of rainfall, a graduate is used as part of the rain gauge equipment. The rain gauge has a funnel, which leads to a container. Checks should be made occasionally to make sure no leaks have developed. Each morning, if rain has fallen, the container is emptied into the graduate and measured. The glass must be held at eye level. Otherwise, the wrong angle of view can cause an error in reading. The rain gauge is the only accurate means for determining how much rain has fallen. Enough time has gone by now to get an accurate calculation of the wind speed from the number of revolutions of the anemometer cups. There are other less accurate ways to measure wind speed. For example, a breeze on your face or trees in motion indicate a wind speed of over five miles per hour. But the anemometer shows exactly what the wind speed is. The number of minutes during which the cups were spinning, divided into the number of clicks recorded on the counter, gives the wind speed in miles per hour. All the facts from these instruments are put on the daily weather record chart. Using the fire danger tables and the information from the weather record chart, it's easy to calculate the danger index and the hazard index. The instructions for calculating these indexes are very simple to follow. The findings are then put on the fire danger chart. When the danger index is high, it's good weather for campers and fishermen, but bad for lookouts because it means the air and the forest fuels are very dry. Another thing we know from the danger index is that when it goes up, so does the number of people who come into the woods. This means that the chances of our having a fire go way up. That's why it's important that we try to get the cooperation of travelers and campers in fire prevention. They help you to do your job when they report fires to the ranger headquarters or the tower. Better still, when they build their own fire in a place where it can't spread. About one third of all forest fires are caused by careless campers and smokers. But whatever the cause, if it's campers, settlers, railroads, or lightning, 
It's up to the lookout to spot and report that enemy the moment he breaks out into the open. Well, there it is. That's the setup. With nearly half of Canada covered with forests, you can see it's a pretty important job. <laughs> 